Let's do some news. Today's day is December 14th, 2018. Time is 2.29 p.m. We're going to talk about the YouTube Rewind. We're going to talk about Daybreak and Planetside Arena. Uh, we're going to talk about HOTS and all that fun stuff surrounding that. Street Fighter V, maybe a couple notes about Twitch, Discord, and DayZ. <sighs> No Sunday today. I have no idea where she's at. But she's here in spirit. <laughs> Build that wall. <laughs> right here. Right here. My co-host. Sunday in chat. Ah, oh, boy. All right. So, it seems, it seems a little cliche to, like, jump right on the whole bandwagon of, like, you know, the YouTube Rewind didn't really speak to me, and so I'm going to make a video about it. But... The YouTube video didn't really speak to me, so I want to make a, a, a stink about it. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, first off, it opens up with we're not gonna go. We're not gonna do a play by play, but it does open up with our boy Will Smith, who I actually love. He's making he's actually making uh, vlogs pretty regularly, and then it transitions over into basically the rest of the garbage. Right? I'm just gonna mute that. Actually, I don't want to hear it. It's got Ninja, it's got all these people in it. A lot of them, I have no idea. I know who Mark Ass Brown Lee is, uh, and I know who Ninja is. I know Casey Neistat is. I obviously know who Will Smith is. I know Markiplier, because I've seen his fucking face liquefied to death on every single one of his thumbnails <laughs> all over the place. Uh, I know that's a bus, but outside of this, I have absolutely no idea what the fuck is going on in this entire video. It's just, it's just weird. Uh, it's, it looks to me like if you, if you watch it, if you watch it, uh, which, you know, I apologize for your, your loss of time. Uh, it feels like, or actually it doesn't feel like it is, it is trying so hard, so hard to be so inclusive. Let's, in, let's incorporate everything, everything. They have charities, they have, uh, they have, uh, they have K-pop, which you'll see in a minute. Hold on, we have to go back and watch that part. Because... We want. What do we do? There's one thing this video needs. K-pop! <laughs> so... Oh, those twins? Oh, I didn't know what to do with that. <laughs> so, uh, oh man. So Casey Neistat made a video about this, and, you know, I, I, I like Casey. I don't watch all of his videos, but every once in a while I'll pop on one because they're always entertaining, and they're also always beautifully shot, and so I always watch his stuff, if anything, just for inspiration on just, like, how he basically composes and edits and everything. Uh, but he did... He did uh, made a pretty good comment talking specifically about like this segment here, uh, the whole K-pop thing. So this is actually so this when I saw this, I was just like, whoa, that's super cringe. Like that is I mean, the whole video is cringe. OK, this was like the first time in the video. I was just like, like physically just like uh, just kind of reeling over it. Uh, and he brought up a really good point. He said when they sat when they sat there and they came and they came up with this concept, this 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 particular part that they wanted to do. They were like, wouldn't it be funny to have, you know, a 37 year old man who, who, who has no, no idea what K, or any, any K-pop artists, uh, doesn't have anything to do with K-pop or any of that scene, all getting excited about it. Like somebody who clearly doesn't fit the target demographic, uh, of K-pop basically, uh, being super pumped about it. And, you know, like. From that perspective, it's like, yeah, that would be, that's kind of funny. There's a bit of an irony there, right? It's just kind of like, oh, like, like, really? Casey Neistat's in this? Like, no, 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 he's not. No, he's not. Uh, and so he says, while they're filming, they're cracking up and they they did a bunch of takes of this. They thought it was hilarious. And it just, it just, when they actually got to the edit room, it just lost the sense of this, this, the, the, the joke, the joke was lost because again, because of the like, the hyper editing that they had done where they condensed everything down, they didn't leave room for any kind of context. Even Mark S. Brown Lee, which <laughs> I'm, the reason why I'm saying it, his name is Marquez, right? But, but if you go back here, 
take a listen to uh, our, our boy Will. It's rewind time. You know, if I control rewind, I would want Fortnite and Marquez Brownlee. Right. So the <laughs> it makes sense the way Casey Neistat was discussing, you know, that things are lost in context. And even Marquez Brownlee, he made a he made a comment saying this transition from Will Smith to the actual, you know, the actual video lost all the context because they crammed everything in. So he says, he, what does he say here? He says, he looks at the camera and he says, Is this what you wanted? You know who I would have asked for? Is this what you want? Is what? Is what what I wanted? Like, this, you don't know what the fuck's going on. Is this what you wanted? I don't know. Is it what I wanted? Like, that's the thing. The way he's presenting it is like, is this what you wanted? And you're supposed to be like, oh, yeah, well, that's what I get, right? Well, what? We have, we have fucking no idea. And so the entire video is basically like this. Uh, <laughs> demand a director's cut. Yeah. <laughs> so as it turns out, this is actually one of the, or actually it is the, oh, Will Smith's career takes off. I know, I know. Uh, this is actually the most disliked video uh, on YouTube. Uh, which is huge. Which is, is, that's 11 million people. 11 fucking million. So it has, what, more likes than the BFA Survival Guide for 8.1? Oh, Jesus. Is that, what is, wait, wait, what is the, oh, let, how about this? Let's do, uh, let's do, uh, just, just, just so we can see the difference here. Oh, wow. It's gone. <laughs> uh, 5 million views. Is this the one? Well, no, it's only got 704,000. 704,000. The ratio is pretty extreme. The ratio is pretty crazy. <laughs> But uh, it is uh, it is not yeah. Uh, what is Justin? Justin? Oh God, Justin's baby song. Let's see. Oh God, Justin Bieber baby. Let's see. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Nine point nine million. Wow. It is. It is officially. It is officially hated by more people than Justin Bieber's. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. Let's go and leave this up for the time being. Just uh, we have something to kind of fill the background here. Um. That is that is a pretty incredible achievement. It really, truly is a uh, a truly incredible achievement. That YouTube has managed to come up with just the absolute worst of video on their own platform. Uh, and you know, if if you look back at older videos, <clears throat> like older uh, uh, rewind videos back in like the 2011 uh, or 12 or something like that. Like it used to be more of like a highlight reel of like what you what you would expect when you come to YouTube. Like these are the influential videos, or these are you know the most the the most viewed videos or whatever. And it was more of just kind of like a highlight reel of yeah, this year in YouTube. Exactly, exactly. That's pretty much what it was. And now it's turned into a production, and they've pretty much lost touch with you know <clears throat> just with 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 what the community is. I mean, first off, we know that they're people that are not in the video that should be the number one most subscribed person is not in the fucking video kind of actually not entirely true yeah, kind of he's kind of not in the video kind of uh yes yeah, so i want pewdiepie pewdiepie is not in the video but uh yes just gotta wait gotta be fast oh god the fucking really talk show host that's not fucking youtube like really talk show host so here we go this is perfect this is good good pause actually good job me um talk show hosts do not belong on this shit they're not fucking youtubers will smith is not a fucking youtuber right he isn't sure like he's making videos but that's not part of the youtube culture he's just a celebrity that's making youtube videos so here, this is the only way that PewDiePie was able to get in. Sub, let me zoom in. Let me actually pull this up full screen here. Uh, sub to P for PewDiePie. Uh, and these all actually all have meaning for, for people that are actually not in the video, which is pretty funny. That's actually uh, uh, PewDiePie's chair. <laughs> so they did, they did sneak it in here. Uh, so at least he got something out of the deal, um, out of, you know, being the number one most subscribed channel in, uh, on YouTube. But to be fair, I didn't see T-Series anywhere, uh, in the video. So perhaps, perhaps maybe it's fine that the top two 
channels are not uh, mentioned <clears throat> or not not featured in any way whatsoever. But it's pretty much a bullet dodged, though. Let's be real; it's pretty much a bullet dodged. Uh, I feel I feel like everybody that was not involved in it that made they all made videos on it and you know, basically cashed in on that. Even the people that were in it, and I'm actually opening up some tabs right now so you guys can see. I went through, I found a list of everybody that was featured in the video, and I went down the list. Uh, I pulled out a couple that I knew had videos, like Marquez Brownlee, um, and uh, and I didn't even get past, like, Casey Neistat, I think, uh, before, like, I realized, like, wow, every single person, like, has, I mean, look, immense pressure and expectation. YouTube Rewind 2018 behind the scenes. This is a video, a follow-up video after the fallout from um, uh, from uh, the, the video's re reception. Uh, obviously, Casey Neistat, in defense of Rewind 2018, he has a video. Uh, Marquez Brownlee, yeah, he's got a video. Uh, the problem with YouTube Rewind. He, this he was like, he's like the, the biggest dudes on there, right? They have issues with it. Uh, YouTube 2018, or Rewind 2018 drinking games. <laughs> so making drinking games out of it, which is apparently what you need in order to actually derive any kind of enjoyment from the, from the video itself. Um, so yeah, basically, it lost touch with community. I'm sure everybody's got a take on it, right? It, but it just feels like instead of instead of focusing on what makes the community what it is, it it, it acted more of a, uh, more like an advertising video. Um, as somebody who has put together advertising videos for uh, for companies uh, on behalf of companies for advertisers, I could tell you that yeah, there's a distinct difference between what what actually happens on the platform versus what uh, we put. Uh, in, in a video or, or, an, or an ad package or whatever uh, for advertisers like there's there is a difference there and what YouTube needs to do is stop trying to make a, a catch-all like not only are they trying to be like so fucking inclusive like half the video and I and, and I don't take this the wrong way but like only, half the video is is in you know other languages which is great but in my day-to-day -day use of YouTube I don't go and watch videos and i think it's great to acknowledge oh it's cool yeah it's worldwide and all that but why not i feel like some of these cultures and some of these other languages have enough content that they can have their own youtube rewind that would actually be tailored more for them so why not do that instead of just trying to get everything into one video and then simultaneously also make it uh advertiser friendly which means you're leaving out a lot of the, the stuff that actually makes youtube's culture Ice Poseidon wasn't in either, was he? <laughs> Ice Poseidon, uh, PewDiePie, I don't think Phil DeFranco wasn't in it. Uh, really, the only genuine person I saw on there that actually had a genuine, I feel like, actual uh, line in the entire video was uh, Simone Gertz. Because she's, I don't think she's po it's possible for her to be uh, ungenuine. She's just too genuine a person. Uh, they avoided a bullet for once. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it says, when is a uh, corporation listening to its user? Yeah, pretty much never. Uh, well, not, not here anyways. <clears throat> my Twitch 2018 rewind. Yeah, I mean, like, Ninja's in it, and it's just like, uh, oh, he was invited but too busy? Yeah, he okay, he turned it down. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, he knew, he knew. Simone is, she is a giant sweetheart. How could you not like Simone? Like, seriously? When she, when she had that brain thing, the, the brain surgery, I was, I was legit worried. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, like it was a family member. Uh, yeah, they will put PewDiePie going in the hole, severe, oh, dude. Like, <sighs> Man, yeah, PewDiePie will never be on it. There's, I mean, like, he's, he's, I mean, he's a Nazi, right? He's, he's a Nazi, so of course he can't be on it. He, why? Because he follows these people that uh, Vox found out. Oh, he's following these people. There's just tithe. It's like, did you count how many, like, liberal folks that he follows too? Or those just don't count because it doesn't fit your narrative? Fuck you. God damn it. All that shit's so, just so aggravating. So aggravating. Ah, getting hot just thinking about it. Might be the sweater. Um, Ice Poseidon is a Steve Irwin of live streaming, and we know how that ends. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he does. He has, he's got a lot of stream snipers that legit follow him around. Uh, like, he's like 30 of them yesterday. My, my friend updated me with that. Like, Ice Poseidon's got like 30 people stream sniping him right now. It's like, that sounds like really fucking scary, dude. I don't think I want to be involved with that kind of weird shit. Uh, Jake and Paul will be on there uh, all day before pewds. Yeah, probably. Although they did, they did feature the Suicide Force in one of the clips, so that's good. So at least they kind of like slid in the Paul guys. Um, Joe Rogan had YouTube's biggest moment of the year with Elon. Yeah, see, that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's, there are all these actual moments that happened that they could have featured. And like I said, it's like they could have had, you know, YouTube, uh, 
I don't know. I don't know how they divide them up, right? I don't know if there's like, uh, I'm sure there's like a Japanese YouTube, I guess, right? Like it's like a separate area. I don't know because I don't go on them, right? I just watch YouTube, just go to .com. Um, I don't know if there's a .kr, uh, but I feel like each each culture could definitely have its own. YouTube is big enough; they can have their own fucking rewind, and that way you could actually have things that relate to those people. It's like we don't fucking know. But yeah, of course we know that everybody's on YouTube. We know this. We don't we don't need to see it all in a video that doesn't feature the things we actually watch. It's ridiculous. Oh man. So so yeah, YouTube Rewind was a catastrophe. We all knew that. YouTube itself is also, they've also said that this is a learning experience. This is a learning experience. And that's good. That's good. You know, it's like it's it's like maybe we'll see, maybe next year we'll see um Something that's a little bit more in line with what the actual community represents. And, and, and you know what? I might be like, I might be like, and you guys too, right? We're like, who the fuck are these guys? But as long as we can watch it and be like, oh, cool. I missed out on all this stuff. I missed, that's, that's the point. It's like, you don't have to know everybody that's in the fucking video, but you have to be able to at least look at it and say, oh, well, I missed out on all this stuff. <clears throat> Man. So, that's it about YouTube Rewind. Moving on. Last week. Remember last week, guys? Last, it was a long time ago. Last week, Daybreak, Daybreak laid off a whole bunch of people. 70, 60 to 70 folks. But Mike, I don't know everyone in the video. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> um, so, they laid off a bunch of people last week. And then, and then, pretty much right away, they said they're going to announce a game on Thursday. That was yesterday, right? This was uh, December 7th. What is that? So it was a Friday? That was Friday. The 11th was Tuesday. So Tuesday, they're going to announce a game on Friday, on, on Thursday. They've had a very busy, busy week. Uh, and so I was like, cool. This is just in time for news. Whatever it is, we could talk about it on the news cycle, uh, or on the news show. And they did. And it's funny, it's funny, because like, this is what made me pull up all three of these links together because we've already gone over this one last week, right? I pulled these all up because right down here on popular threads, Daybreak has suffered another round of layoffs. Daybreak has announced a new game Thursday. Daybreak's new game is Planet Slide Arena. <laughs> so it's uh, uh, clearly they've had a week. They've had a week. If you have not watched, <laughs> it's, this is the massively overpowered. It's pretty much now just the Daybreak um, extension. So. Their new game is Planet Side Arena. It says, and yes, it's a battle royale. Uh, it is a battle royale. It has a battle royale mode, but it's not exclusively a battle royale. Uh, let me actually go and get the video open here. We'll have this thing play in the background. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Obviously, you're going to see a lot of things that you recognize uh, from the Planet Side universe, the deployment pod, all that good stuff. Um, one, some of the, some notes, things that I that I found. I'm actually go ahead and uh, uh, do a little behind the scenes there. Uh, so. It is, it's going to be released January 29th. They say that in the latest dev letter that just came out right before this show, actually, I, I gave it a, a quick look. Uh, they said that in relation to the game, it takes place decades after uh, Planicide 2. And so basically, uh, Araxis, or is it Araxis? I didn't actually say that. Araxis is, uh, is in shambles. Uh, they say loyalty, they say loyalty, uh, faction loyalty is basically out the window. Um, which tells me that if you're a Venu guy, then there's no, there, yeah, they're basically, this is, it seems like there's going to be no factions the way that it was before, right? So that's, that I thought was kind of interesting because I feel like the three factions is such a pillar uh, like it's, yeah, it's, it's a pillar of this game. And so, I mean, you know, we'll reserve judgment until we see what happens, but they do have planned a massive scale, um, you know, battle royale, I guess, type game clash. It's something cla massive clash where they will have, um, up to upwards of a thousand people playing. So it's just a regular shooter now. Well, they have modes. So here's a battles up to a thousand players. Um, they have modes. 
I feel like what they're what what it's gonna end up being like is is a lot like yeah, there is right there. Hold on, stop. Ah, go back. Let's go back real quick and take a look at that that list. That's a good list. There we go. So battle royale, mass. What's this bullshit? No one no wants to see that stuff. Ma battle royale, massive clash, capture the flag, team deathmatch, kill count, doubles, search and destroy, global conquest. So this is um, you know, this is like standard. I mean, outside of battle royale, this is pretty much and massive clash actually. These are all pretty standard with like every other like arena shooter, right? And um, or, or any shooter, I should say, any shooter. Sorry, uh, it is it is twenty dollars a pre-order. There's a forty dollar item somewhere. There's a forty dollar price tag that I saw floating around. I don't know what it's for. Probably a uh, collector's edition or something like that. But twenty dollars. Here's the thing. I'm skeptical, skeptical, just like anybody else, right? I loved Planet Side 2. I feel like that, I feel like that level of play, that level of, of, uh, uh, or that, that, um, scope and, uh, of play is just so epic that I would love to have more in that realm, uh, or in that universe. And so I'm excited about that. I mean, you guys remember the Planet Side bros that we did, right? Like that, that whole series. I fucking love that stuff. It's so fucking good. Um, but I do worry. I do worry because there's going to be microtransactions. Uh, it is $20. So $20 is not bad. It's not like it's a $50 box buy because that would never sell. Um, $20 is like an acceptable range. That, that's, you're, you're getting into indie game range right now at $20. So we'll have to wait and see till we get more. But the, the, latest, the latest dev letter is basically just kind of like an introduction. It's kind of like, okay, so we're going to do this and we're going to... You know, we, we plan for basically it's kind of reiterating a lot of stuff you already seen in the video. Uh, they do want to have the vehicles. They do want to have a thousand people. Um, and I feel like, you know, some of the massive battles that we got into in Planet Side 2 were like you, if you've ever been a part of that and it worked because occasionally, obviously, like you have like lag issues. But but for the most most part, it worked. Um then why not? Like, why not, like, bring that back and expand on it? Like, we know that they're capable of doing it. These big-ass fucking battles with vehicles and, 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 uh, uh, and, and ships and all this stuff. Like, this, there's just so many things that we could do. It was just so flexible. Uh, and so, I'm excited to see what happens, but, you know, I have to wait and see. What pissed me off is that every FPS is jumping on Battle Royale. So you can expect World of Tanks, Battle Royale, and World of whatever. Yeah. No, it's true. Everybody's jumping on the Battle Royale uh, uh, bandwagon. Everybody is. I mean, every week we talk about one. Last week it was CS:GO. Uh, a couple weeks ago, before a couple weeks before that, it was uh, Battle Rights. Uh, everybody. It's yeah. The oversaturation is it's happening. It's totally happening. And it's just it's just a way that it's it's an easy way for people to cash in on um, using assets they already have. You know, that's all it is. Like it's, they already have the assets. Like all they have to do oh, is basically just. Oh, I didn't turn those off. Uh, all they have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Jay! Got me again! <laughs> it's okay, you got a typo in there, and that's permanent! Permanent! Ha! So. <laughs> so yeah, asset flip the genre! Han, wow, that's brilliant. Asset flip the genre. Yes, that is basically what's happening here. Um, <laughs> thank you, Jay. Um, don't starve Battle Royale, God. Everybody's cashing in on it. It's going to continue happening. It's not going to stop. We were all there for MMOs. We were all there for MOBAs. It's going to happen again. Um, the the gradual... It's funny because initially it was survival. Remember, it was survival. And then with what? With uh, Ark, uh, Rust, Daisy, uh, and a couple of others. Um, and then and then it kind of transitioned into... Uh, very quickly into... Um, uh, 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 um, Battle Royale, thanks to the movie Battle Royale, and probably Hunger Games, if we're being honest. Um, and and I've, I've mentioned this before. I should, I should clip that shit and save it somewhere, because I've mentioned it before that uh, all, all signs point to arena shooters. All signs point to going right back to where we were in 1999 with Quake, uh, Unreal Tournament, uh, Counter Strike. Well, Counter Strike's never died, so I guess it's always gonna be there. But I mean, like, basically going back to like that era, the end of the last century, beginning of the century, where we had just basically shooters. You, 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 you show up, you find your weapons, and you kill the bad guys, and that's it. Like that's 
that's the, basically the way these things work. And it's coming right back around to that, where we're going to get smaller and smaller arenas where it's like, well, everybody likes fighting in the final circle. So why don't we just make smaller, smaller maps to kind of feel, get to give people that final circle feel every time, right? The final circle feel every time. And that's what's going to happen. It's going to come right back. And everyone's going to be like, whoa, man, they're going to name it something else though. Right. They're going to have some, some new name for it. And, and all, all of us, all of us who are like old and shit, we'll just be like, oh yeah, you mean just deathmatch? Like, no, man, no, nah. it's called, I can't, I can't even think of a clever way of like saying deathmatch, uh, you know, um, kill the other guy. Fuck. I'm really bad at that shit. Uh, <laughs> kill the other guy. K-Tog. It's K-Tog. Arena Royale. Uh, whatever. Yeah. It's they'll have, they'll have some new word for it. Tickle death box. I've got, I hope so. Um, they'll have some new thing for it and it'll just be basically what we all expect. When I look at battle Royale, I think, oh wow. It's basically like large map deathmatch. That's what it is. It's large map deathmatch. Um, but whatever, it's cool. I think it's, uh, I think it's great. I think it's good as long as we keep shooters in the mix. Personally, I like shooters. So as long as we keep shooters in the mix and they want to keep on doing all this crazy shit with battle royales. Yes, I'm over it. We're all over it, but you know what? I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's better than basically the entire industry being completely overrun by MOBAs, which has happened. We've been there. All shooters basically took a back seat. All shooters took a back seat for the longest time. When high res was pumping out, uh, their like MMO RPS, RTSs, and we had a couple other MMO RTSs that came out, uh, like, or not RTS, I'm sorry, uh, uh FPSs, um, you know, we basically had a bunch of shooters that just went largely ignored because it wasn't a MOBA. And so I'm glad that shooters are in. I really am. Um, and they don't stop coming. They don't stop coming. And they don't stop coming. And they don't stop coming. <laughs> That's the word, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. MOBAs, you mean RTSs? I know, right? It's the evolution. It's the evolution of genres. You know, it's like, yes, it was RTSs first. And then that, and then there was Dota. Uh, and that spawned basically the MOBA. Uh, and then, you know, and now, what is it now? Uh, is it now? Well, we know what it's, we know what it's not now. We know it's not, uh, 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 HOTS. <laughs> <laughs> we know we know that uh, uh is this, this is this the first sign that maybe uh well i guess two things one that um blizzard is uh uh dying which we we we, we already knew that part uh but two that uh, that mobas are on the way out we knew that mobas were on the way out when hots was announced we were excited about it but we also knew that they were kind of the last people they were kind of the last ones to the game right uh and that you know, just that sounds familiar, right? We we talked about uh, Diablo Immortal, and you know, my comments were that Blizzard seems like they're late to the game, and it's their own game. You know, they're the last ones to put out a Diablo mobile game because everybody else has already done it. Um, they're the last ones to put out a team-based shooter because everybody else has already done it. They popularized it, sure, kind of the Apple approach. They definitely made, well, not popularized, but they, they definitely mainstreamed it uh, uh, quite a bit with Overwatch. Um, TCGs, right? Hearthstone. Hearthstone, I would say, I would say Hearthstone definitely had a massive impact because they were one of the first ones to make a card game and popularize it. But Heroes of the Storm, no. We already, like, people were like, why would we play this when we, like, why would we play this when we have, uh, <laughs> so many other MOBAs that we're already tired of? It's just ridiculous. So, Heroes of the Storm, uh, is not closing down, right? Heroes of the Storm is going into maintenance mode, legacy mode, right? They're pulling a bunch of devs off, uh, specifically it says, we'll continue actively supporting the game with new heroes, themed events, and other content that our community loves, though the cadence will change. Blizzard was wobbling on the edge. Activision gave it a spear out of it. Well, I mean, Activision Blizzard is the same thing now. Remember? Remember the, uh, to what, two episodes ago? The assimilation is complete? Yes, it is absolutely complete. Mike Morheim is gone! Time to make some changes! Pretty much what's happening. Uh, let's see, what else to say? This was not, oh, so, uh, da -da -da -da, I have another quote here. Uh, we're also at the point where we need to take some of our talented developers and bring their skills to other projects. Like, like all their other mobile games that they're working on, of course. Um, yeah, they just, exactly, Kimo. They just announced a new hero 
Uh, and it was the first hero born in the of, in the rift. It was the first hero that was like, oh, cool. Now they're gonna have their own lore. They're gonna develop, develop, and then and then they trash it. And then now the game is basically going to maintenance mode. So, um, the biggest the biggest thing, the biggest the biggest impact here uh, is not so much the game because I mean, honestly, not a lot. Of, it's not it's not a very popular game, uh, but. It's all the people that were basically left hanging that uh, they didn't know was coming. This was not this was not a planned thing. Like you could tell this was not a. Uh, all right. So we're going to go into a wind down period before we, uh, you know, basically cancel the heroes uh, HGC, which is the heroes global championship. It's their their esports division. We're going to go into, you know, maybe wind that down a little bit because, uh, you know, the games, you know, kind of wind the game down, put in legacy mode, all that good stuff, right? Um, well, they, <laughs> they, they neglected to uh, tell anybody about it and they just made the change, uh, made the announcement. And so you basically have a shitload of people that are involved in, uh, in the, the esports division of Heroes who are basically just kind of left. They're just kind of left. That's it. It's kind of like, oh, so I guess I, I don't have a job now. If you, I'm actually subbed to the Hero subreddit, and probably about a month ago, I remember threads started popping up. People were saying, "Why is Blizzard so quiet about about uh, about the next season?" Like it seemed kind of weird because you, they expect they expect certain things. Like in between every season of like League, they always have like patch notes and changes. Okay, season seven's coming or whatever season. Are. Season twenty seven is coming, and so here's what's happening for the new new season. And so people are expecting these things to come out. And it just never did. And so obviously rumors started circulating that there's something, there's something wrong. We may, uh, um, there might be something wrong with, uh, with heroes. Is this the end or whatever? And sure enough, <laughs> sure enough it is. Uh, so he says, uh, one of the problems of having a closed circuit esports scene. Yeah. Basically having such control, like such complete control over it is basically is, is sh proving to be, uh, hyper limiting. It's like when you control everything, you can't necessarily, like, there's no way that that blizzard should be expected to, to uh, uh, be able to have, you know, uh, make the game and also host basically literally everything involved with the game. Uh, yeah, this was done by Activision Blizzard product performance and enhancement agent specialties, cutting fat, raising prices, and finding all new things to charge for. <laughs> yes, exactly. What are the problems? Oh, sorry, I read it already. Um, a lot of the casters weeks ago started tweeting about how they were leaving HC to do other things because they saw the writing on the wall. Some of them didn't though, and. You know, they had some choice words to say. Fuck you, honestly. Working six hard months with new fantastic teammates for this shit. Radio silence for weeks. I sent multiple emails. All I got back was that they are working on finalizing the details. So, I mean, it's true. Like, casters are casters and players, like, they're basically just left out in the cold. Like, just, <laughs> yeah, they're just fucking done. Uh, this definitely feels like a, a trim the fat a trim the fat thing we we it's it's so shitty too because i was even though i didn't play the game i did watch it i did enjoy watching it sometimes it's not it's the most exciting game to watch um but i was excited that there was a game that could have all of these heroes and all these characters from all these different games in one i thought that concept was fucking awesome i really thought that concept was awesome but i feel like they fucked it up i feel like they 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 didn't do it right. They could have picked some other genre or came up with something new and included all these characters in a new adventure doing something unique. But no, they they took a they took something that was pretty much known and beat the hell, right? MOBAs, um, and slapped their characters on it. I thought it was so awesome. It was just like, oh cool, we have all these characters in this one game, but uh, <laughs> it's just like I right, well, uh, no, it's pretty much done. Um even at launch, the game didn't have a lot of traction. Like we had uh, at uh, what did we have? We had Heroes, Hero King, Hero. I think it was Hero King that we had at um, at Zam. And, and and honestly, like a lot of sites that we launched, we we launched a bunch of sites just to see what sticks, right? And uh, Hero King, we got up, we got special artwork done for it by Noxie. She was such a great little um uh what was it? it was it was like this cute little fucking murloc uh character that she drew up just for this right we had all this stuff and it got like no traffic it got like no traffic i don't think anybody got traffic from anything uh hots related they're a small a small indie developer i know i love that meme by the way it's the best 
Uh, not all this because of no support for the profits of the game. Oh wait, the profits from the game with under 100,000 playing the game is not enough for cash cows to support the eSport development. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, this guy, yeah, he did guns. You're right, he did lose his job with no prior notice. A lot of people basically lost their job, really, uh, with no prior notice on this. It, this is essentially a layoff, really. When you cancel HGC, everybody that was involved in that, that are no longer doing it, that's a layoff. They don't have jobs. So that's a base, it's a layoff, but they're not going to announce it like that because Blizzard laying off people is, that's a headline that they don't ever want to see. But yeah, this is, this is a layoff. <laughs> it's a layoff. Um, it's shit. It's, it's total shit. Uh, I failed on my HOTS related site. I think a lot of people were trying to come up with some kind of, uh, uh, hots related uh, site and it just, nothing stuck. And the reason why it wasn't necessarily because your site failed for Acor, uh, it was, oh, I think I remember what sites you were working on. Yeah. Uh, but it was because nobody was interested in it. Just nobody was. Uh, let's see. What what does, I'll look at what Activision stocks look like real quick. Uh, I don't want to, I'm not trying to say that, oh, today's decision is going to impact their stocks or anything like that. Um, but it is always fun to look and see what it's doing, right? Let's see. Because remember, we did, we did report on this a little while ago. Let me zoom in a little bit here. We did report on this uh, a few weeks ago just to kind of see what the uh, what the current status was of their, uh, let's see. So this is about, where were we? Yeah, this is about where we basically had that huge drop. Am I looking at the right thing? Activision Blizzard, yeah. So we had a pretty significant drop. Was this it here? That was five days, sorry. Sorry, here we go. <laughs> Six months, ah, there we go. Okay, I was looking at the wrong scale. Okay, I was looking for a dip. I was like, that doesn't really look at the dip that I remember. Yeah, so this is basically where we went from 65 to basically, yeah, it was a huge drop and it's still, it's still down and it's very slowly coming up. Today's, today's, today's announcement has had basically zero impact. Uh, actually, I mean, technically, if you want to, if you want to go there, we could say that it it actually uh, went down and then came back up. You know why? You know why it came down, and went back up? I'm, I'm totally making this shit up right now, but it's funny. Uh, it's because no one gave a shit about hots. <laughs> so they're just like, oh, they're getting rid of it. Well, that just means that they're not losing the five dollars that they're devoting to uh, to that game. So, so investors is kind of like whatever. <laughs> my professional opinion exactly <laughs> uh yeah oh yeah yeah they, if they called it layoffs that would be a huge uh obviously a huge uh difference i'm certain of it if they were like oh blizzard lays off so many you know people related to hgc um then uh yeah i mean i i, re I can already i can already i can already hear the comments i could read them already i could read them already they didn't lay them off because they weren't technically employees or something like that right so there weren't like we like in-house employees. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. That's what it, it fucking counts. If you have if you have a gig that you that you go to or that you do because you're getting paid, whether it's a contractor, exactly, or whether it's paycheck, or even if it's fucking under the table, right? Which th then never happens. Uh yeah, if you have a especially if you have a check, right, that's coming from Blizzard, um, it doesn't matter if you're a contractor or whatever, that's your job. You're not doing something else because you're getting money from this source. And if that, that money stops because they made a decision to basically eliminate your position, then guess what? You've been laid off. You've been laid off. There is no way to dance around it. <laughs> they, you've been laid off. So yes, uh, Blizzard uh, did indeed lay off a whole bunch of people. I wish I knew the number actually because I'm sure it's probably more than 60 or 70, especially if you include all the teams, everybody involved. Just, just... Uh, Cloud9 alone, you know, that's, you know, they're just the one team. That's like five people plus a coach. Well, probably a couple alternates and then a coach. So let's say eight people associated with, um, with HOTS just from Cloud9 alone. And then, and then there's all the other, uh, teams that play. And yeah, it's just, they left ages ago. Okay. Well, then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just just from the perspective of look at one team. If one team had eight people, how many teams are playing this? Yeah, the production crew, exactly. Uh, anybody working production on that? The uh, promoters, all that good shit. Anybody that was exclusively working on HGC tough stuff is basically yeah, they're 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 out of a job. Uh, but yeah, exactly. Like like uh, Arzakiel says. We are uh, thankful for Warcraft 3 because then we could start the whole cycle up again. See, and I left HOTS in 2016. Oh, well, that was the last time I watched HOTS then. <laughs> it is, because that's the last game I watched was them playing. Um, 32 teams from the main regions. Yeah, casters too. Fuck. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That fucking sucks. Devoting, devoting so much time to, like, mastering a game just so you, you know, for this job that you have, right? 
uh, just to basically have it pulled out from underneath you. Just sucks. They could, just, they could go stream, be like the best players on on Twitch, but nobody watches that shit, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, Warcraft, Warcraft Reforge. We're gonna have we're gonna have a a significant number of uh, of mobas <laughs> of Dotas pop up whenever we get um, actually the original Dota. Will, will work because they did say that Warcraft 3 Reforged is going to have um, a retroactive mod support. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's a uh, yeah, yeah. rip. Hots is rip is exactly what I wrote as a title for here, just so I can know what the fuck I'm talking about. And it's true, Hots is rip. Ah, let's see what else, what else, what else we got. Um, does Blizzard do something to prevent other people from doing esports stuff with their games? I think, I think, I don't want to say for sure because I don't know, but I'm fairly certain that they have like a licensing agreement or something that basically only allows them to basically be the, the, um, the ones managing all of that. Um, like if you look at, if you look at like CSGO and uh, basically a bazillion other esports games, like a lot of times there's like all these companies kind of around these games that will, um, that host, you know, whatever it is, like the Intel, like the Intel uh, uh, streamers competition. What is it? The Intel not streamers, uh, Intel IEM. I can't, I can't. Uh, masters, I Intel uh, uh, esports masters. Fuck, I forget. Anyways, so, but you guys, you're fine. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, wow. Intel Extreme Masters, Extreme. Fuck, it's the easiest word in there to remember. So. Yeah, rip hots. We'll keep an eye on that, obviously, but I'm pretty sure it's probably at this point it's going to maintenance mode and we're just never going to hear about it again. Um, this is, though, the first time I believe that Blizzard has officially announced that they are going to not necessarily cease working on a project, but basically put a project on the back burner. Like they, I, yeah, they have, with WoW, they've had moments where they're, no, no, they've never put WoW on the back burner. They never said that. No, yeah. Abandoned, yeah, pretty much abandoned. Oh, Titan. Well, no, no, that's different. That's different. You, you can't, you can't include projects that never took off because there's a bunch of projects we don't even know about that never took off. Um, but I would say any game that that has been released, uh, there's only a handful. It's like what six games or something like that. Uh, um, Diablo, uh, Warcraft, Starcraft. Um, I guess World of Warcraft would be a different title. Uh, Overwatch, uh, Hots. I think that's about it. But yeah, so there's there's only like a handful of games. And so they finally let one go. And that's the first. Thank God Mike Morheim left right before this. <laughs> I'm sure they knew that it was it was inevitable. But uh, yeah, we could pretend as oh Mike Morheim was fighting for it. We don't know that. We don't know that for sure. He probably knew that the writing was on the wall too. Let's see. Next. Next. Let me get this uh, video open here because the video is really what sells this. It's kind of the best. Don't play, don't autoplay. Stop autoplaying! God, autoplay. It's on my nerves. How many of you guys play Street Fighter V? None of you. Good. I'm glad I asked. So, Street Fighter V has in-game advertisers now, and they are as hilariously stupid and inept as you'd expect. So, they... Oh, hey, guns, really? Oh, we got one! We got one! Uh, so... Uh, I don't play bad advertisements. So, they have... Uh, they have put advertisements in the game... Uh, I don't know about the quality of the game itself, but if we take a look at this, uh, this picture here, you can see that there's like some very poorly like alias, <laughs> uh, stickers all over the place for uh, CPT, the Capcom Pro Tour. Um, they have, so what they've done is, and let's go ahead and play the video here so you get the full gist. Oh gosh, why? Stop. Okay, up. There we go. Now, let's take a look at this. This is all part of the game. Like, this guy just went into training. Like, practice mode. Just the right time. That all of that you just saw was basically, like, that was an ad. And then it goes into practice mode. You know when you'd fire it up and you just oh practice mode, just beat up on it, beat up on AI for a minute. Like 
that was the segue <laughs> right there. Uh, it won't impact loading time. Yeah, the there's three options that you can have. I wrote them down here just to make sure I don't fuck this up here. So there's three options. You can have costumes, which we've seen. You can actually see they're wearing it right now. He's got a belt with a big ass CPT logo on it. Um, you can do costumes. You can do loading screens. Uh, or you could have advertisements on uh, um, on uh, uh, Capcom Pro Tour stages, which will basically be like in the background or whatever. Um, you do earn fight money for this. You earn fight money, which is an in-game currency that allows you to buy more fighters uh, and probably costumes and all that stuff as well. Um, there is a box purchase. Yeah, Cliff. Yeah, make the game free. And I've heard, oh, yeah, there is, there is a box purchase on top of this. But you notice right here in the bottom left corner, it says play training mode clear and it says 250 FM. Now that that's probably just for playing training mode, probably maybe, uh, but you do get fight money for basically doing whatever random stuff um, that they have in the game. And one of them is to have advertisements enabled. Uh, so that is obviously not sitting well with a lot of people because it looks janky. It just looks fucking janky. Like, really? Like, this looks terrible. When free mobile tactics are bleeding over? Yeah, exactly. Say, does a uh, crap appear on a costume you've bought? That's a really great question. That's a really good question. I would say that this is not Guile's uh, uh, default skin. Uh, so, I'd say just by looking at this? Yeah, probably. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> six sweater. Thank you so much. <laughs> It's one of my part of my ugly sweater collection. Appreciate it. <sighs> are you surprised more games are you? We know that other games have used them in the past, right? Like we know, I think like Forza actually has like in-game ads, does doesn't it? But it's like it's, it's a lot of the ads in like the racing games that we've seen before. Uh, they make sense. It's like an ad. It's it's like a stick, like a, a sponsor sticker, or it's like a, a, an actual billboard, like inside the game. APB, I think, try to do this too. Uh, to have ads that are contextual. They made sense. This is like literally slapping a sticker on it. Sticker, 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 sticker. Like just everywhere. Just throw ads, just throw stickers all over the place. And then let's, <laughs> that, that's, that's how we're going to run the, uh, uh, their advertisements in the game. Um, here, here we go. Here's, here's right. We said the new ads are optional, so they can be turned off. Uh, when you turn off, you don't see them at all, regardless of your opponent's settings. Uh, to incentivize players, players to leave ads turned on, you're rewarded with fight money. So I already mentioned that already. The ads have been pasted onto characters' costumes or only present on each character's main default costume. Oh! So if you use alt you're safe. Hold on a second. Have I not played Street Fighter in that long that that is the default? I don't, I don't feel like that's the default outfit. Maybe they changed it. I thought he was wearing, uh, like a tank top or something, but could be wrong. Could be wrong. Oh, that is his gal. Okay, so that is is his default outfit in Street Fighter Five. Thank you so much. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, the sticker, the sticker is the sticker's look is pretty pretty terrible. Uh, real guy will never wear that. Exactly, exactly. The in stage advertising only appears on three esports stages released to support the Capcom Pro Tour, and not a tour, and not any other stage. So, so yeah, it's 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 laughable, man. It's pretty it's pretty laughable, and. Uh, Everybody's laughing at them about this. It's just, it just looks bad. There, I have another picture here, actually. Um, this one's equally as shit. This is courtesy of Reddit here. Uh, this is, uh, this was actually part of a, uh, I think it was like, it was a move that he was doing, a combo move that basically, you know, give you get the, the cinematic effects or whatever, and it's special. Uh, and it's a big fucking sticker right on the back. It does look terrible. It looks really bad, uh, but this is, uh, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> see, this is, right, it's bad, it's really bad, even Reddit was like, nah, this is not real, <laughs> like, they were just like, this is not real, and, like, people were confirming, like, no, nah, this is real, this is exactly, what this is it, this is a screen grab, um, that's his alt rage demon takes up the entire screen, yeah, <sighs> Yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's funny because you almost think if it didn't look so fake, we might not be so just taken aback by it. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It could look okay. Like if it wasn't if it wasn't brightly lit in this grunge scene, if it wasn't brightly lit, 
they would make this would make a little bit more sense. It'd make a little. I could open this up in Photoshop right now and make this look better, right? But I won't because Photoshop's full of nudes. And we can't do that here. Uh, <laughs> so it's it is um, it can be done a little bit better. Like if if feel like if if they if they just just kind of let it blend in a little bit more, you would still see it. You would still see it, but at least it wouldn't stand out like this. Just looks looks bad. Akuma's back always had the Japanese symbol for evil. I guess that's never changed. Damn, Rock. Damn. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, Street Fighter V advertisements in game, very wonkily put together. Is wonkily a word? It is now. Very wonkily put together. Um. So yeah. Speaking of wonkily put together, did you guys know that DayZ is officially launched 1.0? Woo woo! I don't, I don't know anything about what what's in uh, 1.0. I know that uh, I know that Shizzle's playing it again, which makes sense because Shizzle built uh, a lot of his um, initial fan base off of DayZ. This is like if Trials if Trials Rising released, and I was just kind of like, nah. It's like no, <laughs> that's. That's not gonna happen. Um, and so yeah, it's, it's, you say, uh, wait, see, and he was nearly dying from it. He had one stream and he was nearly dying from it. Really? Did you watch it? What was the, um, what was his, uh, like just in general, like what was his take on it? While he, while we're, he's still bored? Oh man. You know, a lot of that is because we've played so many games since then that have basically ramped up the, um, the event count, I guess, the events per minute, sure, uh, or per hour, that playing a game that's as slowly paced as uh, as DayZ feels slow, right? So he's still bored, nothing new, stuff taken out, same map, right? Yeah, same map. We've already done this map a billion times. Uh, he has 3,000 hours in the game, sure, yeah. No, I know, I believe that, absolutely. Uh, more than that, actually, because that's probably just baby DayZ standalone, not even including daisy mod so a lot of salt from shizzle streaming daisy yeah how funny how good for him holy shit good for him because there was a period in time when he could not get away from daisy he could not get away from daisy because if he did people would get upset and you're telling me that like people everybody's like everyone's backing him up it's like yeah this game is just not that fun anymore oh my god that's got to be such a relief that's got to be such a relief. Man. Well, uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's more. There's more. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like 2,000 people watching play Daisy. Yeah, but what about recent one? Well, let's not talk about his numbers or anything here. But um, because it's just... It's, first off, first off, this also marks Daisy not being the oldest... Uh, uh, early access title on Steam. So they are no longer the oldest early access title on stream or Steam, sorry. Uh, that is actually now goes, that now goes to, uh, let's see. Interstellar Marines. This is early access game. July 13th, 2013. It's a, uh, it's a shooter that's inspired by uh, this game, this game, and that game, and also that one. And you have these modes to choose from. Half of those are available in uh, Planetside BR. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Which actually has mixed reviews. Has mixed reviews. All reviews. But recently, mostly positive. You still have this game in your library? Well, apparently the, the developer, uh, he's a fighter. He has not given up. He is still making content. Or he or she or the group or however many people are there. Uh, they have not given up. And they uh, just keep on putting content in the game. So that game makes you sad. Oh, last updated when? Let's see. Last updated. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Recent updates. Uh, October 27th. Well, when we're co-op stuff, uh, let's actually take a look at all news pieces. So we can see. October 27th. Da, 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 da. January 20th. Yikes. Okay. We're not doing so well. But that's a lot of updates. Holy shit. That's a, that's a pretty big patch. Uh, January 8th. December 7th. Uh, okay. Now we're at last year. So it looks like things were a little slow this year, but still most recent updates still say pretty good. I'm not trying to defend this game. I have no idea what this game is. I have no idea. All I'm saying is that it is now the reigning champion, oldest early access title currently on Steam. Good for them.
Blind Daisy launched. And then that was it. And then that was it. That was the end. That was it. Day- Daisy launched, and then uh, everyone was just kind of like, okay. <laughs> when is Daisy getting a battle royale? I know, man. They should call it Survivor Games or something. Uh, the longest early access paperweight game is due out in January. Kingdom Hearts 3. Been waiting since. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yo, you're right. We could probably find titles that we've been waiting on. Vaporware titles. Uh, what, what, might as well actually throw in uh, Half Life Three uh, into the mix. Wait, Half Life Three is that is that technically older in terms of like speculation than uh, Kingdom Hearts Three? I don't know. Duke Nukem Forever did come out. We did get Duke Nukem. Cube World is working its way up there though. It still has some years. Star Citizen is not quite as old. I know we want to throw some of these games under the bus, but we got to be honest. Sorry to say this is not that old. Cube World is not also not that old, but they'll get there. Don't worry. We never had we never had Duke Duke Forever. Yeah, we never we never got the we just we're just ignore those one. Warcraft 4. Well, we don't know if that's actually a thing, Titan. Okay, okay. Jeez. You guys are just naming just shit that's never gonna come out. Why can't I zoom in on this thing? What is wrong with this? Ah, ah, hold on. Jerks. All right. Next up in news that you guys probably don't care about, but I kind of do because I was part of this whole thing, um, is that Twitch, who's owned by Amazon, happens to own a little brand called Curse. Curse was a direct competitor to, uh, to Zam back in the day, and they were purchased by, acquired by Twitch, which this is how, like, a lot of people that worked at Curse ended up working uh, at Twitch because they were kind of like segued in because they were they were working on projects, uh, specifically the Twitch launcher, which, as you remember, was previously the Curse launcher. Which, when I remember when I remember when uh, I remember when Twitch acquired Curse, and we were just like, oh yeah, they want the launcher or they want the uh, um, the app, they want the Curse app. Uh, we knew that was it. You know, we were actually at the time we were working on our own launcher, uh, trying to get out, get it out, up and out uh, on time. But we just, you know, lacked the, I guess we just lacked the, uh, the longevity because they laid everybody off. But anyways, <laughs> so, uh, Twitch is now selling curse to Wikia who was their former, uh, I guess maybe still, uh, direct competitor. Because Gamepedia and Wikia were pretty much, I mean, if you look up a game, like, like look up, like, work, uh, uh, um, uh, Don't Starve, or, uh, let's see. Man, I'm blanking out on games. Warframe, I think Warframe has, uh, has both a Gamepedia and a Wiki, uh, Wikia. It's just a thing. It's just, like, it's just, it's just, they, they both basically hosted a number of Aliens Colonial Marines Wikia, yeah. Yeah, it is, uh, yeah, it's the basic internet form of Prima. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, I didn't think I had to explain what Wikia was. I really hope, I really hope that that wasn't the case, but, um, but anyways, yeah, so they basically sold Curse Media over to Wikia. I don't know what that means for Gamepedia. There's a lot of stuff on Gamepedia. Gamepedia was a, uh, competitor to Wowhead, um, but, uh, but yeah. Yeah, I have no idea where it's gonna go from there. What? We'll we'll, we'll wait and see, but it's interesting to see that there's a, uh, that there's less, there's so little a need for these types of sites that they could just basically merge and no one gives a shit. <laughs> like, it's just like, oh yeah, this whatever, no one cares. Because uh, no one, uh, because no one uses those sites anymore. Because, you know why? Because games, there's so much hand-holding in games that nobody has to look anything up anymore. So, or, or, and probably most likely the real answer, it's much easier to go watch a, a video on it. Just basically go to YouTube. That's what I do when I'm stuck on something. Do, 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 do. Hey, how do I do this thing? And then ta da! And then there it is right there. Um, let's see. The only use for curse are wow add ons. Yeah, actually, that's true. That's the only reason why I use the curse client too, is for that for a while. I was like, I don't use it for anything else, actually. <laughs> yep. Um, next up, this is, this is a small, we're, we're knocking out the small news. Actually, this is the last piece. This is the last piece of news. Hey, all right, cool. This one I think is kind of uh, kind of amusing because what will happen to mods? That's a good question. That's something we'll have to wait and find out. I'm pretty sure they're going to have this stuff. They're going to have this stuff uh, all taken care of. Um, Discord. The Discord store 
this discord is like, how can we continue to lose money? How can we continue to like not make a profit, a profitable, uh, uh, venture here? How, how do we do that? Let's go ahead and now for 90, 10 revenue split. Let's just, let's just fucking, let's just keep, let's keep losing it, man. Let's just keep, we got it. We got it. No, I don't know what, I don't know what discord's financials are, but I can't imagine they're making any money. Like they're making, I can't imagine. I can't, I, I feel like they're probably just living off of investor cash right now. And they're just going to, they're just doing whatever they can to, yeah, it's a launch, basically make, get more installs, make some money. And they're going up against some big names. Discord is doing the Amazon route, lose all the money and convince people to use more because we're not that evil. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> one day, one day we will all be sitting here and be like, wow, man, remember Discord was awesome. And yeah, because <laughs> that's what happens. Everybody, they all live long enough to see themselves become uh, uh, the bad guy, uh, the villain. And so what does this leave us? Uh, Steam is at a, uh, Steam was a 70-30 split. Um, Epic had a funky one. It's like 88 or something. It was like 80, 80 and something else. And now, uh, Discord is 90, 10. So, so, so who is going to be the 95, five? Huh? Huh? Who do you think is going to be next? Huh? Who's next? Let's see. Who, who do we have left? Is there anybody left? Is there anybody left that hosts games? I don't think so. I don't know. Um, yeah. The extra uh, Atari. Yeah. <laughs> Will there be a 100? There is a 100. Uh, who is it? Oh, God. G2A. Yeah. G2A. They, they're 100 to zero. It's 100 in their favor, of course. But uh, yeah. G2A. G2A is, uh, they've got the, the 100 thing on lock. Uh, Twitch launcher host games. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That's true. Oh, man. I find it weird to play games on Discord. Like, that isn't why I joined Discord. <laughs> Atari will play, pay you to, to uh, play their games, to buy their games. GOG Galaxy. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what the cut is on other, on other platforms, but I am, like, genuinely interested now. Like, everybody's trying to one-up everybody else and come up with, like, oh, look at this. There's my, you know, look at this cut, look at this revenue split. You know, because everybody has a launcher now. And I'm curious, like, where is, where is GOG on this whole thing? Uh, GOG, Green Man Gaming, um, uh, oh, uh, Chronos? Like, Chron I'm surprised, actually, that Chrono.gg does not have a launcher. They must be the only, like, game-selling platform that doesn't have a launcher. This is long dead. That's long dead. Long dead. <laughs> Unfortunately, they were the only like real competitors of Steam back in the day. But they, uh, yeah, they they went under. Is Chrono.gg a thing? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. They still have games every single day. Every day I have a different game. Please, I want space for my fucking games. I know I have more launchers than games. Damn it, it's kind of ridiculous. Ninety nine and one, and the ninety nine point five point five. Yeah, exactly. Competition uh, means nothing for the player base. Well, so that's the thing. It's like we want, obviously, we want competition. Like we want, we want competition so that way we can have, um, you know, better prices on things, uh, better quality software. Uh, you know, all everything that comes along with that. I just thought of who has a hundred zero side with the developers, Dolby, Blizzard, the Blizzard launcher. There you go. Yeah, see? I knew I could think of one. So, yeah, anyways. So. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, 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 I am, uh, I'm excited that there's more, more uh, actual uh, competition. It is annoying. It's annoying. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> uh, it is annoying because there's so much. There is so many, but, uh, but you know, eventually the best ones will surface and we'll get, we'll be, we'll be with, uh, we'll have like what, one or two, uh, we'll have like two, maybe two or three actually. Uh, I don't man, on discord, discord scares me, man. They're, they're trying so many things. I love discord. I fucking love discord. Uh, but it scares me with how much they're trying to do with, when I, I never hear an article about like how profitable they are or, uh, 
how successful they are. You know, like we know that their stuff works. We use it all the time, but we never really hear anything about the financials or the business itself. We just hear about how they're they're reaching. They're trying all this stuff. You know, they do a video. They did like live video. Uh, they're now they're hosting games, and it's just like, okay, yeah, we're doing all this stuff. Like, what what's fucking left? Like, is pretty soon we're gonna have like the Discord book. It'll be like a Chromebook, but it just has Discord because it has a browser built into it, and so you can play your games and surf the internet and talk to your friends and talk and verbally talk to them and do live video all on your Discord top, your desktop, or whatever they're gonna call it, your disc book. Uh, it just seems like they just keep on going. And so they I don't know where they're going to stop, but, um, but geez. desk book. No disc, disc, disc book, disc, discord book. I don't know. Whatever. whatever. Ah, we'll think of a good name later. So we'll wait and see what happens with that. But man, that's it. That's it. We went through all the news. I actually thought we were going to cut some of these things. I actually thought the YouTube rewind was going to take forever, but I decided not to watch the entire thing, which I think was a good, that was a good, uh, that was a good, a good thing, right? You guys don't want to watch that entire thing, do you? Disc book space. <laughs> if you plug it, it would be. Oh. But what would it be? Discordless, I guess, if it was unplugged. Huh. Huh. The disc top. Disc. Discogram. Man, this is hard. <laughs> deck. Deck note. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, we. Discogram. Discogram is actually pretty good, actually. I kind of like Discogram. Um, Dickstagram. Uh, and it's ruined. And it's ruined. So that's it. Potentially the last episode of news before the <laughs> uh, before the end of the year. Um, we'll try to squeeze one more in, but you know the holidays come up and things get crazy. But you know it doesn't get crazy. The news usually there's not a lot of news around the holidays. Things get slow. So uh, I know tears. I'm gonna miss you guys too. Uh, I'll be still be streaming, so I'm gonna see all you fucks like every day. That's totally fine. Uh, but uh, in terms of news, yeah, we'll come back after the new year or next week, whichever one comes first. And uh, get some more. When is uh top five most controversial game? That's what this been. That's what this is. This has been that. This is what it is. This is it. This is the most controversial. We were talking about it all year, every every day, every week. Sorry, every week. That's what we do. Sorry, I'm just passionate about that stuff. I wish I could do the top five controversial games uh, for 2018, but uh, I kind of like I kind of like just talking about it every week. I, and I also like I also like that I don't necessarily have to like skip certain subjects like you know blizzard not that i not that i you know didn't appreciate that josh worked with blizzard and everything but we couldn't talk we couldn't talk about that stuff uh, on that uh, on our shows because he worked there so one of these days josh won't be involved with blizzard anymore i'm sure i'm sure and Inevi it's inevitable in the games industry uh and uh, we'll go back to talking shit about blizzard and it'll be awesome yeah i can't wait so that's it thank you to my co-hosts thank you so much co-hosts right here these guys and girls, I can't, how do you fucking, how do I put my hand at the bottom of this thing? There we go. I got it. I got to figure it out. I got to figure it out. Thank you so much for joining me. Sunday never came in. Sunday, whatever. Ah, if you want to join this crowd of beautiful individuals right here, you can just tune in. What time is it? Ah, just Fridays. Usually twitch.tv slash AK Mike B. Also, you can find me on Twitter, AK Mike B. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're like, whoa, Mike B streams, I'm gonna be super mad. Damn it, I'm gonna be super mad. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you later. That's all you get.